Uh, people need to restrain and never permit the animal part of our nature to uh, uh, push in the background our rational or our spiritual nature. We need to always push the spiritual nature in front of the animal uh, stuff in us. Don't always jump bad or jump mad when someone says something unkind to you. Now that's just plain practical. Because some people don't know what they're saying. They don't know what makes you angry. And sometimes they do. But even if they did, uh, Jesus has injected a formula in that for you to restrain the old person. Mm -hmm. uh, pray for them that what? Despitefully use you. Now isn't that restraint? That's holding it in advance. That keeping uh, some people say, and I could probably even say it, I've said it on the, on the video probably sometimes, there was a time when I'd have pulled out my shame. You know, I'd have got with you. If you want to get with me, I'd have got with you. Uh, that was the nature of the beast in the training I got on the south side of Chicago. You had to get with it or else they'd get you. So I learned to get with it. Now, in my ministerial life, in my Christian life, I had to put restraints on that. Now, there's still some part of that nature that's still a part of me. And I just don't allow myself to become angry to the point that I would reach for something. And then to further restraint, I don't carry no shame. Amen, y'all. Because if I carry the shame, I would be relating to what? To the old man who was in me so very vividly at a time in my youth. So we all bring uh, baggage from our life without Christ. And you don't always have control over that. You have to work at restraining yourself from that vile nature that was once yours. And you did have a vile nature. If you didn't have a vile nature, you wouldn't need Christ. Mm -hmm. But since you admit that you had a vile nature, you need a transforming power in your life so that you can have a tranquil spiritual life. And then patience, and he puts down there in the next one, uh, the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Now, I don't know whether you rather have a, a definition of patience, but that is for you to keep for yourself. It is the capacity, and that usually is a mental uh, handiwork, whatever you've got up here. It is the capacity in your mind to accept mm, trouble or suffering without getting angry or upset. Now that, 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 that sounds like an almost impossibility, doesn't it? So immediately it means you're going to have to practice it. Before you can become perfect in anything, you've got to Practice it. So you've got to practice tolerating. Don't give people word for word. Anger statement for anger statement. Mean look for mean look. Learn to tolerate or accept the mean stares that come from people that are deliberately trying to aggravate your spirit. Oh, Lord, huh? And I, the Lord knew it wasn't going to be simple. He knew it wasn't going to be easy. That's why he said, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit that has the capacity to keep you lest you fall. So that's why you need the Holy Ghost. And the only way to have the Holy Ghost is to be in worship and in praise and in adoration of God. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Practice, practice, practice. Remember, remember, remember. Know 
what thus saith the Lord. In other words, mimic Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Do what Jesus would do. I said jokingly, I wish I had been the person who had that bracelet that had on it, what would Jesus do? Oh, I wish I had been smart enough to think of that. Because that man is rich now. He's rich over two or three or four different times. But the question was, one that Christians wore, them. did any sinners wear that band? Why would they wear it? They care nothing about Jesus. But Christians bought those bands. And the reason they bought them was because they were trying to train their minds to do what Jesus would do. But if you would stay in this book and read the life of Jesus and study the life of Jesus, you wouldn't need a band around your wrist. You would know in your heart how Jesus would treat people. Do good to them that hate you. That's what Jesus would do. And Peter said, Lord, are you asking me to really do this? He said, uh, how many times shall I forgive my enemy? Till seven times? Legitimate question for a Jew. Seven was a complete number, perfect number. Seven times? Jesus said, I'm sorry, Peter. I'm paraphrasing. No, you're going to have to go a step further. I want you to do it until 70 times 7. Multiply 70 times 7. 7 times 7 is 4. That's 490 times. You mean to tell me, let me see. Uh, I, got a, I got a friend named John. Okay, John, I got to forgive John on Monday, one time. Forgive John on Tuesday, one time. Forgive John on Wednesday, three. When I get to seven, if it's seven times, then I can quit fooling with John after seven times. But Jesus said, 70 times seven. What was he trying to say? As often as it is needed, forgive your brother. And why was he saying that? Because how many times if you look into your own life has God forgiven you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. How many times have you been wrong and wronged other folks and you went to the Lord and asked for forgiveness? Yeah, when you ask him for forgiveness, he is faithful and just to forgive you for your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He goes a step further. But we've got to practice this. Right. We've got to get into the doing business and not just the reading business. Right. He that heareth these sayings of mine and what? Doeth them. I will liken them unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. And when the floods came and the winds blew and the waters descended and beat upon it, it did not fall, for it was established up on a rock. But he that heareth these things of mine, or readeth these things of mine, and doeth them not, I liken him unto a man who built on the sand. And when the winds blew and the floods came and beat on the house, it fell. And great was the fall thereof, because it was established on sand. We need our lives to be established on a rock. And the only rock we know is Jesus. Uh, uh, any other foundation is phony. You can't build on Confucianism or Buddhism or is faith. Now, is this simple? Is this easy? No, it ain't simple and it ain't easy. But it is doable. You can do it. It's like anything else you're not accustomed to doing. You have to strive until you master it.